Hello and welcome to another episode of Motors for the Masses in what is a multi-project video. So we'll come on to details a little bit later, but for now let's roll the intro and get cracking. So to start with, let's have a look at where we are with the Honda NTV. I have finished raising the seat. Now I didn't film the entire process, but I took photos along the way. So first of all, let me show you the outcome of those photos and then I shall reveal what it looks like now. You might not like it, but I'm pretty pleased with the outcome. So, are you ready? And here it is! A seat that's higher than it was before. So there you go, I am pretty pleased with that and it's very, very solid. So there you go, that is the NTV currently up to date and we will be back on this at a later date. Not too long, certainly isn't going to be Bob. But on the subject of Bob, let's head over there now. And here it is! You must remember last time, if you can't remember, it was two months ago, um, last time we looked at this bike we were making this cow here to house the light. Now I know I've been waiting for Malcolm and I have been speaking to him this morning but um, he's still not about at the moment although he is planning on popping over and doing some work on his Cortina next week perhaps uh, and hopefully we'll be doing a Q&A as well. So um, we're going to be posting up a video showing uh, or asking you to lay some questions down and then we will review those questions and uh, Malcolm, Jamie and myself will answer those in a Q&A session when he gets over here. So that is coming up soon. But in the meantime, I'm going to give this a go. Now I'm going to use a CAD, which is a cardboard aided design. And what I'm going to do is um, try and make this shape out of cardboard so it fits nicely in there and then I'm going to apply that to this piece of metal behind me and I'm going to cut it out and weld it in and try and weld this as one piece and what I'd like to do is weld it from the inside and just tack it together and then weld in a seam hopefully we'll see how that goes in a seam on the outside now, having spoken to Malcolm, I do need to turn down the settings on the welder, so I should be doing that and seeing where I go. So, stick with me. Let's see if this works, shall we? So, to start with, I need a rough shape. Now, this is going to be... Um, easier to go that way with the flaps. Brilliant. A 
it's not far off. If I cut down to there to start with. Now you can see this has gone quite rusty just by sitting here and so has the mud guard. Even though the mud guard was rusty, it's gone even rustier. Now the reason why it's this far away is that if it was right up to here, that curve would look stupid and then it'd be concave rather than then out again. It wouldn't work. So we're going to go with a gap like that and then it should be a gradual curve, he says. So there we go. The cardboard section is cut out and all I need to do is lay that on the metal, draw around it, cut it out on the metal and then shape it and hopefully it'll work. Let's give it a go. Right, so before this goes any further, don't worry about my head not being in, it's not necessary. Just want to make sure we've got this the right way round. Yes. Now of course it's going to need a little bit of trimming. Now we know it goes that way, it's time to shape it. And we're going to shape it around our trusty can. He says, in a very positive way. Now of course this isn't just a straightforward roll, because it has to roll at an angle, so this is going to be difficult. So I wonder if I put that around there first, and then try and shape this after. It's going to need some shaving off either end, which I knew, just to bring it down a touch, but other than that, that's not bad at all. So, I'm going to shave the edges off and make this match up, and then we'll come back. So there we go, the piece is cut and shaped and ground down to the right shape and ready to be tack welded on before I finish off the edges and then weld on the next bracket. However, I'm going to pause there and I'm not going to weld it today and I'll tell you why. Stepping back from it, I'm not convinced. I don't know if it looks good. It looks very high in comparison to the short mudguard. Now my question is, and I'd like your opinion so please leave them in the comments section below, do we go with this design that Malcolm did originally? Um, the concept sounded really good and I like the idea but now it's all together it just looks a bit tall and cumbersome and I don't know if it's going to look right. So do we go with this design 
Or do we get rid of that, get rid of that, and have that with the, just that in, like so. Or do we do away with that altogether and just have the light? I'm not convinced about just having the light because then you've got all the wires and stuff here. Now I know Malcolm's idea was to have the wiring that can go down inside the cowl and a nice sloping effect. It just looks a bit too tall for this size of bike and that size of mudguard. It might look okay if it was on a like a 190 or a 200 back tyre, but I'm not so sure on a 130 for 40, 50, whatever it is. Just looks a bit too tall. Please let us know in the comment section below which one you prefer. So the full sweep, just with the end cowl on, or nothing at all. Let us know and we'll go with that. Because after all, this is a bike that's going to one of you and I want it to look right and not look a bit odd. So the last time I was on the Mustang, I welded in these two plates and Although it looks okay from a distance, it's not that brilliant and I was blowing holes in it, if you remember. Now, the reason why is I had the settings wrong on here. Um, underneath the metal is very delicate and I need to use a one minimum on here because it's too thin and I need to turn down the flow a bit to get a bit more heat into it, I, I think. Something like that. Anyway, we're gonna try lowering the settings which means I've got to cut this out and put another piece in here. So there we go, look. That is pretty bad under there and I do need to sort that out before I can go any further. So what I'm gonna do is cut all the way down there across a section in there and then try and see if this is salvageable before I can weld another piece in. It doesn't have to be a bowl, it can just be a flat piece because it's going to be underneath here, you're not going to see it, but I need to see what's in there and then rust proof this section. So you can see it's very weak and very brittle. So I needed to get that out. Under here is uh, some kind of paint by looks of it. Other than that, that, and that is solid. So that's good. So what I need to do is scrape all this out, clean all that out, rust proof all around there, and then I can cut out another section and weld in there with a bit of luck, he says. Well, looking at rust proofing, Clearly this vehicle is 50 odd years old. It's never really had it. And inside here is solid. So any kind of rust proofing, I'm not sure is 100% necessary to be honest. So I'm just gonna clean that with a wire brush and just spray it with some primer. Cover it in there with some primer, spray it all up, make it nice and clean in there, and then weld in a new piece and then push this back down and weld that back on with the correct welder settings. So, wire brush. Okay, that seems to work. So I've got the uh, welder set on one minimum and the flow down to three and a half or three and three quarters. And that seems to be enough. Good, right, I'm gonna finish this off now. See you on the other side. Well, isn't that just typical? I was talking to Malcolm earlier and I said, how long does uh, welding wire last? And he said, I don't know, check in the door. And guess what? I've just ran out. So I have to get some more and pick this up in the morning and then, we're going to try those other wheels on the Escort. 
And as a final touch, we're going to come on to the 404. Now, this has been put back together. The carbs have been reset and the floats, but we haven't got time to balance the carbs and set it all up. So for now, it's going to take pride of place on the plinth. Now, bearing in mind this is a heavy bike and I cannot lift this on my own. Um, we are actually down here to have a meeting to discuss the possible reopening next week and the week after with the skeleton staff. So I've got three volunteers and we're all wearing masks and we're going to lift this bike up there. So this could go very badly. Right, let's go. I would say, that's a success. Success. Ah, looks good up there. Marvellous. So there it is, in its resting place for a while. Obviously we'll get it down and fix it at some point, but I want to get the NTV sorted out and that will be my daily rider, as well as the Triumph and the Mondial. And I want to get the Escort sorted out and of course the Mustang. And we're obviously going to get on Bob and get that done, sprayed, and out to one of you. If you wonder what that noise is, Chris is over there making a piece of wood. And he's going to put that wood under here to support it, just in case. So it is now the next day and I have some more welding wire. So what I have to do is put this in the welder and crack on. So that's actually remarkably heavy for what it is. Right. So having finished the welding and ground it down, I'm still not completely happy with the way it looks, simply because one, I'm an amateur and it's two different thicknesses of metal that I'm welding to. One's 49 years old, or however long, 40, 50 years old. And uh, the other is uh, new. So it hasn't been brilliant, but it's sealed. But I just want to use some silicon sealer to uh, go over the welds, just to smooth it over and make it look okay. You're not really gonna see it because it's under the wings, but even so, I know it's there, and I want it to look okay. Now for this, I'm gonna be wearing gloves because uh, this stuff is bloody awful. And it stinks, I hate the smell of sealer. So I will leave that to dry, come back in an hour or so, and spray it black. And then it should look better. So as this is my own vehicle, I'm not too bothered about the way it looks on the inside, as long as it's solid and it's welded properly, so I'm happy with that. I'm going to spray over it, you're never going to see it again, unless I take the wing off for any reason. So, uh, yeah. An amateur has done what an amateur does. Fudge through. So, whilst that is drying, 
we're going to put the 13 inch wheels on this and see what we've got to work with when it comes to the wheel arches. So, having now pumped the tyres up because all the 13s are flat, which could be interesting in the future, let's get this off the ground and get that wheel off. And they're not very tight, that's good. <laughs> now it appears there's an inch spacer on these back wheels. I don't know if that will be needed with the 13s or not. Now the other thing is those wheels, even though they're all the same size, two of them have got 175 tyres on and two of them have got 205s. 175s, not going to happen. With these wide arches, 175s are just not very big enough. Right, let's get the other one out to compare, shall we? <laughs> hmm, a slight difference. So, do I take the spacer off or leave it on? Bearing in mind how far they stuck out, now there obviously is a big difference in offset. I am going to leave that on for a second and see what it looks like. And then marry the, or lay the arch on and see how that looks like. Bloody engine in my back. Maybe I should move it. Another interesting development. They do not fit even halfway through there. Look. So it seems these, which are the only ones I've got at the moment, which came with the car, go in there, but don't even go halfway through. So <laughs> it seems they're only just going to marry up with this, which means it's not really going to screw on very far at all. How the hell did he have these on there before? I've just taken the spacer off thinking whether that was going to be the issue but it's not because obviously these don't go further than that. Well bugger me sideways. Well anyway I can see that if the spacer were on even though I can't bolt the tyre on or the wheel on I can see that's where it would sit and with them on, it's too far out, because that's not even on the body, look. So it's too far out. So the wheels need to go on without the spacer. So I'm going to try and remove those studs and just bolt the wheel on with normal wheel bolts. But again, I don't know if I've got ones long enough to go all the way through the wheel and into the hub. If I haven't, I can't do this today because I don't have any more studs. Of course this would be awkward because I can't put the brake on. Wonder it does have a handbrake. Which feels as though it's fully on, so it isn't working. Alright then. Um I need a bar of sorts. on there a number of years. Oh, I'm getting too old for this crap. Right, round two. Oh, of course. That's got the wrong bloody fitment on the end. Jesus Christ, I give up. I give up! 
That's it. I've had enough. We shall overcome. Ooh, don't like the sound of that. Of course, the problem will be the last one. Well, to be fair, the last two. Because <laughs> I've got nothing for this bar to go against, so they're just going to spin. Unless I can loosen them enough. Oh, that's quite loose, actually. Ah, don't tell me this one's been put on cross threaded. Oh, bloody hell. Oh, that one's easy as well. Oh, come on. Yeah, that one's easy as well. Oh. So who put this one on? Cross-threaded it. Unbelievable. Oh my God, it sounds awful. And we are no further forward because having got that off, it was definitely cross-threaded and this is much thicker than it should be. This one comes off a lot easier. A lot easier indeed. However, when you look at the length of that, wow, that's hot. It's just under two centimeters. And this, just under two centimeters. Which means this is still not gonna go through that wheel and onto that. That's it, stop there. <laughs> Unbelievable. So I still can't go any further because I've got to change these studs. However, this looks like it's a spacer as well. So that might be enough to do it. So I'm still going to get these studs off, get this other spacer off. So basically there is this spacer and this spacer. Bloody hell. I'm not beaten yet. Not by a long shot. is an inch and three quarters. <laughs> right, let's get this wheel on. He says, in hope. Yay, that is definitely enough space. Really? So the 22 just spins, the 20 doesn't go on, and of course I don't have a 21 over here! Or oh, even a 21mm spanner, and I can't be asked to go all the way over there again! I don't, I'm not going to resort, no, no I'm not going to do it, I'm not going to resort to the nightmare tool. I think you all know what that is. Well, I resorted. 21. <sighs> now that sits a lot better. Okay, let's try again. That's correct. Right. How does that look? Because I think that's pretty spot on. Is that right? It's not the right side, is it? I can't work out which side these are. They both seem to fit oddly. <laughs> anyway, I'll work that out later. For now, that looks like it's the right width, although it still does need some trimming. And these are with the revolutions and no spacers. Hmm. Oh, let's see if I can move this jack. This jack is pretty crap. Oh look, it's undone. Oh, here we go. Okay. Yeah. Obviously it will settle once it's moved backwards and forwards, but uh, it's pretty much 
in line, sticks out by about a millimetre, just the side wall. So, I can't work out if I'm getting the right sides here. No, that's not right, it's definitely the other one. Yeah, it's definitely the other one. What are your thoughts? Let me know in the comment section below what you think. Width-wise, I think that's just about right. Yeah, cool. Now the front wheel is a lot easier to get off. Um, I'm going to try it with this spacer still with 205 and see how much it sticks out. Just in case. So just imagine the space that was on there, because the studs are still on there. See what it looks like. Bearing in mind the wheel arch, which is a lot wider on the front than it is on the back. That's interesting. That stud stuck in there. Don't think it's going to reach anyway. Hmm. Well, that is too big. I think. Unfortunately I can't tell because I haven't got long enough studs to bolt it on. So I can't actually do a proper experiment. But it seems as though it's still a little bit further out. So I'm going to have to take those off. But I want to leave this spacer on. Because I think it needs that spacer. Which means I can't put the front wheels on right now because I want to leave that spacer on that's not long enough for the studs to go through and that wheel there I want to use a 205 tyre on the front as well not the 175 mm. they are different wheels they might be revolution but they're different wheels one big way of telling is that the uh, valve <laughs> comes out of this part of the wheel on here and on here comes out the side like the revolutions they're definitely different sizes well that makes it even bloody annoying more annoying oh, well, 175s on the front I think I might have to source some new wheels and sell these Don't like the revolutions anyway. These might be for sale soon, so coming to an eBay near you if you want two different sizes. Curiosity got the better of me, and I decided to put this on and get rid of both spaces. Apparently, there's an elephant on the roof as well now. So, got the spaces off, put that on, of course. Both of these stud extensions had been cross-threaded, so they're completely and utterly chunky, which left two studs that had been unmolested. This one is jammed in that wheel, so that ain't coming out at the moment. Um, so I put them on the two good ones. One of them would not go on. It's getting very frustrating, and I was starting to lose my temper. So much so that I pulled that off, and I did that. And as I did, as I pulled it off and dropped it like that, the end, the 21mm socket that I had to go over the road and get, flew off. This came off as well and that laid on the floor. The 21mm socket has disappeared. Seriously, I have searched everywhere and it has vanished. <laughs> it's, it's so bloody frustrating, it's almost funny in a not funny kind of way. Karma has decided you should have stayed really calm. But I wasn't, I was starting to lose my temper. And I didn't even slam it down, I literally did that and dropped it down like that and looked back at the wheel. And when I looked, that was laying next to this bar and the 21mm socket has bloody vanished. So I can't even get the wheel on. Ah! I'm starting to hate this car. Um, I kid you not, this is 100% the truth. As I was just searching around the floor for this 21mm socket, 
laying on the floor, I found, and I'm not joking, a 21mm socket. <laughs> Which doesn't need the reducer. Can you believe that? <laughs> Someone's having a laugh with me. It doesn't feel to me like it's going on. Mm. Oh, this is. It's getting tight. That's good. Okay, Karma has decided she's had enough of playing games. Hello. Oh, God. Uh. Uh, 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 uh. I don't like the feel of that. Don't tell me the studs come out the back. Hang on. I don't like the feel of this. I'm not quite sure where this is going. Unless I just haven't screwed it on long enough. That's not on. That can't be. Where is it? Is. That doesn't seem to be getting any tighter. It's not! It's not! It's still not going on! No! What's going on? I don't understand what's happening here! <laughs> what, what, what the hell's going on there? Ah! Oh. The studs have come out of the back of the hub. Yep. I'm going to give this up today. I'm going to put an axle stand under it and walk away. Because otherwise, I might end up doing something I regret. And that could be expensive. In other news, I have managed to pick up something else. One was off the floor. It's the missing 21mm socket. It was over there by the wall. So, I'll put that away in a minute. And I've also managed to pick up a boot lid for the Escort without the spoiler. It is made of fiberglass, but it could go on there. Obviously with the other boot not on there, and I don't want to take all the nuts off yet because they were more than finger tight and more than spanner tight and I've got a funny feeling that one of them is cross threaded. I'm not going down that route right now. So, options. I have three of them. Do I go for the standard boot in fiberglass? Okay. Or do I leave this as it is? With this weird looking end spoiler, leave it on and I've got a metal boot. Or, as Malcolm and someone else has suggested on the previous video, thank you very much, just make the ends out of metal and weld them in. That's the other option. So please let me know in the comment section below, what would you do? Would you go for the standard flat look? Bear in mind it's going to be a rally car, not a mint Mark 1 Escort. So do I go for the plain boot, leave this as it is, even though it is a bit wonky and it does need a lot of filling and sorting out, or add the ends on and do it that way? Let me know in the comment section below. And that's all we're going to go on the Escort today, but I'm now going to head back over to the Mustang and spray the inner wing. Right, I am going to finish this off and then I'm going to head home for a bath. So thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this multi-project catch-up stroke fettle. Um, we'll be back very soon with uh, Malcolm. He's going to pop in and um, have a chat with you and obviously...
do something on his car and hopefully Bob as well. And we've got the Q&A session also and we'll be back with more reviews. We'll be opening up the shop again soon so stay tuned for more reviews coming. And don't forget of course we've got Jamie on board so we've got a three-way questionnaire. We've got one for myself, Malcolm and Jamie so get ready to put your questions in the video that I shall be putting up very soon. And until next time please ride and drive carefully but have fun. Bye bye.